हेलो स्टूडेंट वेलकम टू माय ईवीएस क्लास दिस इज शुमी रॉय फ्रॉम टेक्नो इंडिया ग्रुप पब्लिक स्कूल शिलीगुड़ी एंड टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट अ न्यू चैप्टर फ्रॉम योर ईवीएस बुक दैट इज चैप्टर नंबर एट कॉन्सिक्वेंसेस ऑफ ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज इन दिस चैप्टर वी आर गोइंग टू लर्न अबाउट स्ट्रेस ऑन इन्वॉर्मेंट ड्यू टू अवर ह्यूमन एक्टिविटीज we are going to discuss about stress on land use stress on water resources stress on energy and mineral resources stress on forest stress on ocean life and at last environmental degradation now let us start with the introduction growth in human population caused shortage of food due to increased consumption it caused need of more space for habitation and more resources for various human activities including development now the shortage of food was overcome by bringing more land under cultivation the production of food was further increased by using synthetic fertilizers pesticides and hormones in agriculture and by rearing large number of cattle and poultry more land was used for constructing cattle sheds and poultry farms and all these activities were done by clearing forest or by using cultivable lands the need of space for habitation was met by using cultivable land for the construction of houses and apartments vast areas of water bodies in the villages were reclaimed and houses were built on them Developmental activities consume more and more land and other resources of natural environment. The whole environment was put under severe stress through human activities. The magnitude of that stress is increasing and it may reach to dangerous limit in future. in this present lesson we are going to study about consequences of human activity in respect to land water energy mineral forests oceans and the environment on the whole now let us start with stress on land use the early man did not know how to use land as he was merely a hunter and food gatherer however he lived in caves and gradually learned to construct a cover for his living and protection as hunting of animals was no longer an easy job he had to depend on plants and trees that grew in the wild gradually he learned to grow plants to dig ground and to irrigate his crops he learned to domesticate animals too then he started living in groups along with his cattle thus society was formed and villages took shape In this way stress on land started in various ways With the growth of human population more and more land was cleared for cultivation The pattern of land use have been changed considerably in modern times and the land was come under serious stress due to population growth human activities development and industrialization Now let us discuss the status of land use. The total surface area of earth is 51000 million hectares. Out of that area only 29.2% is land and rest 70.8% is under water. About 30% of the land surface is useless because it consists of marshy swamps, deserts and steep mountains. in some countries large areas of sea is reclaimed for commercial use the netherland are an important example of such activities in japan engineers have created additional land by filling bays and harbors now let us see the status of land use in india in india 54% of land area is arable and 22% of land area is under forest cover there are wetlands spread 
in the 18 percentage area. Four percentage of the land area has been protected under National Wildlife Protection Plan. We have 88 national parks and 490 wildlife sanctuaries. Now let us see the changes in the land use pattern. Within the period of last few decades, a very considerable change in the land use pattern has been observed at the global levels. The total increase in the crop land area was 31.2 percentage. The increase in the net irrigated area is 86.2 percentage. Net increase in non-agriculture, non-forest area is 107.4 percentage. Decrease in grassland area is 78.8 percentage. And decrease in non-cultivable barren land is 44.2 percentage. Not only land, the water is also under stress. Now let us discuss the stress on water bodies. We know that life cannot exist without water. It forms 66 to 90 percentage of total body weight of living organism. It also participates in the process of photosynthesis. Thus, water is a vital resource for entire biosphere. But only one percentage of total water of the environment is fresh. It is contained in rivers, lakes and the subsoil. Less than 0.01 percentage water circulates in atmosphere and comes down as rain. Fresh water is also found on hill caps in the form of ice. Ice forms two-thirds of the total fresh water available on land surface. Now let us see man's water requirement. We need fresh water for drinking, bathing and washing. We also need water for irrigating our fields. Water is also needed in cooking, industrial use, power use, agriculture use. Now let us discuss the causes of degradation in water quality and wastage. Drains from industries bring impure water to our water resources like rivers and lakes. The dumping of waste near water bodies and rivers is a bad practice. 80% of all diseases are spread through water alone. With the current rate, let us see the future scenario. 20% of the world population does not have access to safe drinking water. Proper water sanitation facilities are not available to 25% of world population. 75% of the total available fresh water is used in irrigation. 20% of it is used in industries. Thus, only 5% is available for drinking. Now let us see the position in India. India receives about 1400 to 1800 mm of rainfall annually. Per capita use of water average to 600 cubic meter. Agriculture is the biggest user. 70% of the total water available in India is impure and unfit for drinking. Our country lacks proper facilities for the shortage and management of water. Most of the Indian rivers like Ganga, Damodar and Yamuna are polluted. Savage treatment, water treatment and reduction of waste at sources are some of the measures that can be taken to decrease water pollution. Now let us discuss the stress on energy and mineral resources. The growth of human population demanded more and more energy in various sectors of human activities like agriculture, housing, transport, telecommunication, commerce and industrial and many others. Minerals are those resources which are obtained through mining. They can be classified into metallic and non-metallic minerals. Metallic minerals are found in the form of different types of ores. 
metals are extracted out of specific ores through various physical and chemical processes. The given table shows a basic difference between metallic minerals and non-metallic minerals. Metallic minerals contain metals and non-metallic minerals do not contain metals. Metallic minerals are these minerals are malleable, ductile and hard, whereas non-metallic minerals are soft and long lustrous. Examples of metallic minerals are iron ore, bauxite, gold, silver. And some examples of non-metallic minerals are potash, salt and sulfur. Coal, petroleum, natural gas, etc. are non-metallic minerals. Fossil fuels and wood are our principal source of energy today. Beside this, uranium and thorium, the metallic minerals that are used in modern era for obtaining the nuclear energy. Coal, oil and natural gas are fossil sources of energy. Wood is the principal source of domestic energy in rural areas. Electricity is the secondary source of energy of modern industrial development and social well-being. Electricity we use so largely comes from thermal power plants which consumes more than half of the world total coal production. Buses, trains, trucks, scooters, cars, all run on oil, while natural gas lights the kitchen burner. Thus, we cannot imagine a life without the use of fossil fuels. However, it is fortunate that scientists over the world have been able to find a number of alternate sources of energy. Few alternate sources of energy are mentioned here. Solar energy, nuclear energy, wind energy, wave energy, geothermal energy, bioenergy, magnetothermodynamic energy are some alternate sources of energy. Now, with this, today we will end our topic. Now, let us recap what we have learned in today's class. We have learned that growth in human population caused shortage of food due to increased consumption. It caused need of more space for habitation and more resources for various human activities including development. We have learned that this made a stress on land use. It also made a changes in the land use pattern. After that, we have discussed that the growth in population also put a great stress on water resources. We have discussed the global distribution of fresh water. We have also discussed about man's water requirement. And at last we have learned the causes of degradation in water quality and wastage. Under that we have learned that cause of wastage of water is often seen here and there. Leaking taps and ruptured water pipes were considerably wastage of water. Too much of fresh water is wasted through our careless practice while bathing, washing, etc. After that, we have learned the stress on energy and mineral resources. We have learned that the growth of human population demanded more and more energy in various sectors of human activities like agriculture, housing, transport, telecommunication, commerce and industries. It has through the development of science and technology that human beings started the exploitation of various resources of energy and minerals, which in turn kept a serious stress on energy and mineral resources. In our next class, we are going to discuss stress on forest, stress on oceans and environmental degradation. Thank you all for joining the class.